Hello and welcome back to more of Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper. We're looking at the Whitechapel map, right? And two compasses, which are pro... Someone needs to clean this. Probably... okay. And, um... It, well, we have... there's a map, like, right there. Yeah, yeah. First of all, let's place our four murders on this map, as well as the spot where the graffito appeared, and the piece of apron was dropped. Did he say graffito? Graffito? That's an interesting way to say that. Annie Chapman was killed, um... She was the first murder, wasn't she? So she was killed, um... There? Um... The graffito was found over here. Graffiti, sorry. Graffiti, I don't know. Catherine was here. Um, Polly, wait, was Polly here? Here? And then Elizabeth was, I don't, I don't know where the hell Elizabeth was here. No, that's Buck's Row. Shit. Um, okay, let me look at my notes here real fast. Um, murder of Liz. Liz was killed... Liz was killed... Dutfield Yard. Liz was killed at Dutfield Yard. Is that supposed to be Elizabeth? That's right. Golston Street's right. Hanbury Street. Um, Mitra Square. Dutfield Dutt Yard. Is, I'm sorry. Again, I have the worst memory in the world. Um, Dutfield Yard, yeah. Elizabeth was at Dutfield Yard. Um... Hunbury Street murder was, um, oh, that was the first murder, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. That was the one where there was two murders? Buckstro and Hunbury Street murders. Who, what, who was killed on Hunbury Street? Annie. Annie was on Hunbury Street. That's right, okay. Um, the Bucks Row murder was um the bucks row <laughs> okay uh oh polly nichols on bucks row perfect watson Let's connect each crime scene to the one out of the others that is the furthest. This one's the furthest. What am I doing? <laughs> what did he say for me to do? You see, Watson, the oh. murders aren't grouped together, but seem to be spread out like cardinal points around a central zone. The killer obviously wanted to avoid returning to the previous scenes of his crimes, assuming that they would be more closely watched, or that he could be recognized. So, he's so be the right killer here? lives at the center of this cross? In the vicinity, most certainly, but how near? We cannot afford to get it wrong. If you concentrate, Watson, you will notice that the murders are roughly equidistant from the intersection point of the diagonals. Let's focus on the night of the double murder. Remember, Watson, it took us 20 minutes to get from Dutfield's yard to Mitre Square. Let's draw a line from one to the other. Dut where's Dutfield Yard? There's Dutfield Yard. Um, Mitre Square is... Here. Perfect. We didn't make the trip as the crow flies, but that would not harm our estimate. Let's suppose the killer left Dutfield's yard at 1 a.m. and arrived in Mitre Square at 1.35 a.m. when he was seen by the two Josephs. 
If he took five minutes to change his clothes, that leaves a range of ten minutes to determine where this man's lodgings are. We must determine the area in which one can go from Dudfield's yard to Mitre Square in less than half an hour. To do this, let's draw an ellipsis. The length between Dutfield's yard and Mitre Square corresponds to 20 minutes. By adding half, we get a distance of 30 minutes. By taking the two right segments, each starting from the two murder scenes, and which the sum of the lengths makes 30 minutes, we get our ellipsis. Ah, um, oh. Ah! I'm sorry, what the fuck am I doing? Um, reset. Can you explain that to me one more time? Trace on an ellipse in which we can go from Dutt's Field Yard to Mitre Square in less than half an hour. Dutt's Field Yard to Mitre Square. There we are, Watson. Our killer lives in ah, this area. Ah, it's still rather a vast it. area, Holmes. Yes, Lord, indeed. And I our swear. goal is to reduce this area as much as we can. We must consider the fact that the murder at Mitre Square was committed under a certain amount of pressure, given that the killer knew he was wanted for the acts he committed not long before. We can assume that he had to do it in a safe zone, that is, an area not far from where he lives. This is especially true of an act such as the graffiti he carried out after two murders. Let's trace a circle around this point, with the distance separating it from Mitre Square as the radius. This will enable us to determine our killer's safe zone. So that's easy to understand, because Mitre Square will be the radius. Oops. Our killer must surely live inside this circle. Now, let's intersect it with ellipses that we previously determined. Let's intercept it and what what do you want me to do? Oh, mark it. There we are, Watson. Oh. The Aldgate okay. district. Shouldn't we inform the police so that they can concentrate their efforts on this area of Whitechapel? It is probably already crawling with inspectors, Watson, and I doubt that they would take us seriously, even if they were willing to listen to what we had to say. Let's focus instead on understanding the killer's modus operandi. We know our murderer preys on prostitutes who are penniless, weak, sick or alcoholic, that he distracts them the moment before killing them, and that he left an anonymous message inciting anti-Semitic hatred at the entrance of a building occupied by Jews. How would you describe this man? What a Dick. coward! Indeed, he is a person of great cowardice. Let's look at his murders and in particular the depredations on the corpses, putting aside that of Liz Stride because on that occasion his work was left unfinished. If we recall the observations made on the victims and the parts that were mutilated or damaged on each of the bodies, without forgetting the fact that he also removed one or more organs. We can ascertain that our killer evolves during the course of the murders, cowardly and still evolving. And yet, look at the location of our first murder, that of Polly Nichols in Bucks Row. It is the most distant from the area our killer would appear to live. Perhaps this murder was preceded by another within the killer's area. I believe a cowardly killer would commit his first murder in an area close to his home in order to find refuge as quickly as possible on carrying out the act. Holmes, an idea just occurred to me that fills me with dread. This evolution of which you speak. He will pursue his next victim as long as the conditions permit him to continue killing Watson. But how could one go even further in this horror? Look at what he did to that woman, Catherine Eddowes. In order to avoid having to answer that question, we must act with haste and planning. Watson, I suggest you inform yourself on the mutilations sustained by the victims. 
we played with the idea that this could be an act of vengeance against prostitutes. If the mutilations correspond to areas affected by a specific pathology, perhaps the killer wanted to give an eye for an eye for an affliction he felt the prostitutes he knew were responsible for. And this they trail leading nose? to Dr. Tumblety Holmes? I also have a few things to look into in the meantime. I still have a primary witness to track down, not to mention old trails I've yet to pursue. See you soon, Watson. What? When we first spoke about the Bucks Row murder with Watson, he was reading a newspaper, The Star, dated September 1st, 1888, I believe, which mentioned similar murders in the preceding months. I have no chance of finding the police reports, but perhaps I could find some information at the Central News Agency. I must go there at once. Afterwards, I'll go back to see Abraham, the owner of the pet shop in Whitechapel. The second Joseph statement would lead me to believe that he may know the man spotted on the corner of Church Passage that night. If that's the case, I must find this witness so I can question him. Okay, wait, what? Okay. We're trying to find the new witness. Is that the first thing that we're doing? Hold on. Alright, let's go to the map. I have no reason to go that okay, way. Okay, not there. Nothing of interest uh, here. Ah, could you repeat what you just said? I have no reason to go Again, that way. Again, my memory is like something special. I have no reason okay, to go that, that way. White Chapel. My memory is a little bit. Nothing of unique. interest here. Nothing of interest here. And the fact that. I have no reason to go that I way. I am just awesome at literally forgetting things immediately. Ah, bullying there we is go. there. It won't hurt just this once. Hello. Hello, Mr. Bulling. So, did your colleague tell you about the tip? What tip? Ah, I see. I gave him an explosive tip, and he went without you? Oh, that's not very sporting on his part. No doubt he took all of the credit for his discovery. You're winding me up, mm -hmm. eh? I'm a show bullying something to make him believe me. Um... What do you want? I'm not winding you up. The proof is that he gave me this advance on the debt. The traitor! He uh, owes me! If I find okay. him! Before I leave, can you do me a favor? Hmm. Heck, tell me. I am looking for some reliable info on the murders committed in Whitechapel in the months before Polly Nichols' attack. Reliable? Ha! You really think you'll find honest. that here? <laughs> Fine. I'll be honest with you. We have folders that group the dispatches from the current year into categories. In the police law category, you'll find the transcripts from the trials and investigations that we sell to the newspapers that ask us. Perfect. Sadly, I am out of time. I'll leave you to solve it, eh? You're the detective, aren't you? <laughs> is this the area where the violin goes absolutely nuts in the background? If it is... I hope you guys can hear it. If it happens again, I'll turn it up. The dossiers are full of papers in dated envelopes. I can't open them. That would be too obvious. How can I tell which compartment to look in? No categories are indicated. It's a puzzle. You have to put the categories together. Yep. Okay, cool. An envelope is torn. I can tell that this dispatch contains economic information. Economy. Oh, God. Was that the only one? Oops. Um. So the front page is probably just one paper, right? Um. Weather is probably pretty short itself. Um. I don't know what personality, society, culture, I don't know what those would be doing in, like, news. Um, I don't watch the news at all. Um, sports. Wait, what were the blue ones versus the white ones? What 
Wait, what were the blue ones versus- Where did he go? Oh, he left. Sir- mm. Sir, sir, as the agency receives numerous dispatches, the filing system that you made appears to be too small, particularly for the world and society se sections, which cover too much area and f overflow into boxes below. Police law and cult- Police law- Oh, God, can I write this down? God. Uh, police law and culture, respectively. Would you be able to finish- a device in order to keep only one filing cabinet while awaiting your response sir please accept our best wishes assistant director so the world and society world and society are on top world and society are on top and they're very overflown so these ones so world and society and um Got no memory. Um, Sevenson and C Enterprises bill repair for the wood news brief compa compartment one pound. News and brief compartment. News news and brief. News and brief. The compartment was broken on news and brief. Oh, this one. Oh, so that's not weather. I was just guessing for that. News and brief. Okay, and, um... Police, law, and culture, respectively. Police? Po police? Maybe that... Police? Law and culture. Cool. Um... Are there any other tips to show where the other ones are? Dear Fernand, F dear Fernand, Fernand, I'm confirming my presence on Friday evening at the club. It will be with pleasure because I must get my mind off things or risk falling into a black depression. Just imagine, the news laddie still has the flavors of that Janet. What? But she'll end up forgetting him and giving in to me because I am not lacking in ideas to get rid of her suitors. Yesterday, I randomly placed a few inventions and science with pol politics dispatches. After all, they are always harebrained. What what is harebrained item? What does that mean? Um, given that the compartments are one on top of the other, it could have easily passed as the news lad's error, and as anticipated, he was called in by my boss. As soon as I have the chance, I will show him how, like in the news, everything everything's in the balance. He ba balance. He looks like a halfwit. He could easily confuse the politics with the society section on the right. Fuck. And the latter with the economy, which is a neighbor. What a lovely mess. You're so descriptive. Um, I don't know how an intelligent girl like Janet can like a swat like him, but he doesn't have much longer to smile. Even more info. Fuck. To improve the dispatchy filing, filing propose major info up the fuck is that word? Giddy, giggy, jiggy, except news and brief minor info down low, except politics, law, something. And I can't read this. This <laughs> in future propose also to invest news and brief, which is for the moment up high and police law which is actually down low furthermore the weather section is almost always empty put it with news and brief oh my goodness Whew. okay I could do this I could do this my throat will literally hurt after playing this game sometimes my dear George your little brother has had some misfortune. My first week of work was very grueling. For, 
Oh, I'm supposed to be a boy. First, I was given a spot far from the stove, and I'm very cold in the morning. Next, I have to sort through the dispatches, the most tedious and boring work imaginable. Once the work is done, I must take each envelope to the journalist in question, who won't even deign to look at me. Finally, at the end of my third day, the boss called me into his office to give me a sermon. It seems that I had mixed up the dispatches. I was so worn out that I could only protest half-heartedly. He gave me a second chance. So now I'm in a sticky situation. The only hopeful note comes from that of my colleague, Miss Filthin, a charming young woman who is the only one to give me a smile. She helps me as much as she can and tries to prompt me regarding which compartment I should put my dispatches. Because everyone here knows the order of the sections, but no one has bothered to tell me. The lady has so much compassion and slides me notes such as politics and society are on the side. Sports is underneath economy. Personalities is at the end of the row. Front page news is the first compartment, etc. And these confidences are almost words of love from her mouth. I don't think that she likes placing the envelopes on the desk at all because she ends up with some thanks that are very disturbing. I have volunteered for the task, much to everyone's displeasure. Nothing new concerning my landlady, but I managed to pay her for the week, and she consented to keep me. Don't say anything about my troubles to Mumsy. I don't want to alarm her, but not wanting to lie to her, I have chosen not to write. With warmest regards, your brother, Albert. I think that's all the information I need. Okay. This is gonna be... <sighs> I wish I... <sighs> okay. Let's do this. Um... Personalities is at the end of the row. Um... Front page news is the first compartment. Politics and society are on the side? Side of what? Um, sports is underneath economy. Sports is underneath economy. But I thought culture was underneath economy. Wasn't s World and society sections. World and not economy, society. So society? World and society sections. World. Um. Wait. World and. I'm sorry, what? Um. These envelopes contain dispatches of police and judicial cases. Now, I need to open them discreetly. I must try to unglue the openings. I got it. I got it. Oh my god, I got it. I should leave those up for the these poor employees. That's awful, awful. I, I'm sorry, did I say I should open these up discreetly? I have no reason to go that way. Closed. I 
need something. What do I need? Water. I need something. What what do I need? I need something. I need something. I I, I need something. What do I need? I need something. I need something. I'm trying to boil water, right? Am I trying to boil water? I need something. If I boil- oh, there we go, yeah. Okay. I need something. So I can steam the water open, I got it. There, that will provide me with steam. These envelopes contain dispatches of police and judicial cases. Now, I need to open them discreetly. I must try Got to undo it. the openings. Got it. Got it. Open, and it looks like I'm in luck. This envelope contains precious information. Testimony in the Smith Affair, Day of Inquest, Saturday, April 7th, 1888. Mr. Wayne E. Baxter, the East Middlesex Coroner, held an inquiry on Saturday the 7th of April at the London Hospital respecting the death of Emma Elizabeth Smith, aged 45, a widow, lately living at 18 George Street, Spitefields, who, it was alleged, had been murdered. Chief Inspector West of the H, H Division of Police attended for the commissioners of the police. Miss Mary Russell, Deputy Keeper of the Common Lodging House stated that she had known the deceased for about two years. On the evening of Bank Holiday, April 2nd, she left home at 7 o'clock and returned about 4 or 5 in the next morning in a dreadful state. Her face and head were much injured, one of her ears being nearly torn off. She told the witness that she had been set upon and robbed of all of her money, witness took her to the hospital, and when passing along Osborne Street, the deceased pointed out the spot where she was assaulted. Oh. She said that there were three men, but she could not describe them. Mr. George Haslip, house surgeon, stated that when the deceased was admitted to the hospital, she was drinking but not intoxicated. She was bleeding from her head and ear and had other injuries of a revolting nature. Witness found that she was suffering from ruptured peritoneum, which had been perforated by some blunt instrument used by great force. The deceased told him that at half past one that morning, she was passing near Whitechapel Church when she noticed some men coming towards her. She crossed the road to avoid him, but the, avoid them, but they followed, assaulted her, took all the money that she had, and then committed the outrage. She was unable to say what kind of instrument was used, nor could she describe her assailants, except that she said that, one, a youth of 19. Death ensued Wednesday morning, April 4th, through, through a parotid something set up by the injuries. Margaret Hayes, living at the same address as the deceased, de Deposed to seeing Miss Smith in company with a man at the corner of Ferrant Street and Burdett Road. The man was dressed in a dark suit and wore a white silk handkerchief around his neck. He was of medium height, but witness did not think she could identify him. Did she maybe lie about it being three men because she didn't want to admit that she was a prostitute? Chief Inspector West, H Division, stated that he had no official information on the subject and was only aware of the case through the daily papers. He had questioned the constables on the beat, but none of them appeared to know anything about the matter. The coroner said that from the medical evidence, which must be true, it was clear that the woman had been barbarously murdered. It was impossible to imagine a more brutal, brutal and dastardly assault and he thought the ends of justice would be better met by the jury recording their verdict at once than, better than some adjourning to some future date in the hopes to having more evidence brought before them. Damn, this is hard to read. The jury returned the verdict of willful murder against some person or persons unknown. 
The police are making every possible inquiry into the case, but up until yesterday, April 8th, not had not any clue to the persons who committed the outrage. Oh god, it's another case. <laughs> Last day of inquest, Thursday, August 23rd, 1888. Yesterday afternoon, the 23rd of August, Mr. George Colster, the deputy coroner for Southeast Middlesex, resumed the inquiry of the Working Lads Institute Whitechapel into the circumstances attending the death of Martha Turner, or Tabram, a hawk her, lately living at Four Star Place, Star Street, Commercial Road, East, who was discovered early on the morning of Tuesday, the 7th in intersection laying dead on the first floor no first floor landing of some model dwellings known as george yard building commercial street spite fields when found the woman presented a shocking appearance there being 39 stab wounds on the body some of them apparently having been afflicted with a bayonet Alfred George Crow, cab driver, 35, George Yard Buildings, deposed that he got home at half past three on Tuesday morning. As he was passing the first floor landing, he saw a body lying on the ground. He took no notice, as he was accustomed to seeing people lying about there. He did not then know whether the person was alive or dead. He got up at half past nine, and when he went down, the staircase the body was not there witness hard heard no noise while he was in bed police constable thomas barrett 226 h said that the last witness called his attention to the body of the deceased he sent for a doctor who pronounced life extinct dr t r killing of 68 Brick Lane said that he was called to the deceased and found her dead. She had 39 stabs to her body. She had been dead for some three hours. Her age was about 36 and the body was very well nourished. Okay. Witness had since made a post-mortem examination of the body. The left lung was penetrated in five places and the right lung was penetrated in two places. The heart was penetrated in one place, and that would be sufficient to cause death. The liver was penetrated in five places. The spleen was penetrated in two places. The stomach was penetrated in six places. The witness did not think all the wounds were inflicted with the same instrument. The wounds generally might have been inflicted with a knife, but such an instrument could not have inflicted one of the wounds, which went through the chest bone. He, his opinion was that one of the wounds was inflicted by some kind of dagger and that all of them were caused during life. All of them? That sucks. Henry Samuel Tabram, 6, River Terrace, East Greenwich, husband of the deceased woman, said that he saw her alive about 18 months ago in the Whitechapel Road. They had been separated for 13 years owing to her drinking habits. She obtained a warrant against him. For some part of time, witness allowed her 12 S a week, but in the consequence of her annoyance, he stopped this allowance 10 years ago, since which time he had made it half a crown a week, and he found she was living with a man, as he found she was living with a man. Henry Turner, a carpenter staying at Working Men's Home, Commercial Street, Spirit Fields, stated that he had been living with the woman Tabram as his wife for about nine years. Two or three weeks previously to this occurrence, he ceased to do so. He had been he had left her on her two or three occasions in consequence to her drinking habits, but they had come together again. He last saw her alive on Saturday the 4th in st I don't know what that means in Leyden Hall Street he then gave her f money to get some stock when she had money she spent it in drink while living with the witness deceased usual time from coming home was about 11 o'clock as far as he knew she had no regular companion and didn't and he did not know that she walked the streets as a rule 
He was, he said, a man of sober habits, and when the deceased was sober, they usually got along well. God damn, this is so hard to read. <laughs> Why does it keep going? My throat hurts. <laughs> Mrs. Mary Bousfield, wife of the good woodcutter, residing at Four Star Speed Place, Commercial Road, knew the deceased by name of Turner. She was formerly a lodger in her house with the man Tur with, with the man Turner. Deceased would have would rather have a glass of ale than a cup of tea, but she was not a woman who got continuously drunk. And she never brought home any companions with her. She left without giving notice and owed two weeks' rent. Mary Ann Connolly, Pearly Paul, who was at the suggestion of Inspector Reid, 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 was cautioned in the usual manner before being sworn, stated that stayed she had been for the last two nights living at the lodging house in Dorset Street, Spirit Fields. Witness was a single woman. She had known the woman Tabram for about four to five months. She knew her by the name Emma. She last saw her alive on bank holiday night when witness was with her about three quarters of an hour and they separated at a quarter to twelve witness was with Te tebram and two soldiers one private and one corporal she did not know what the regiment what regiment they belonged to but they had white bands around their caps after they separated tebram went away with the private and witness accompanied the corporal up Angel Alley. There was no quarreling between any- Fuck me! Oh my god, how- Oh my god, okay, just a little bit more. <clears throat> of them, witness had been to the barracks to identify the soldiers, and the two men she picked out were, to the best of her belief, the men she and- she and Tabram were with. The men at the Wellington barracks were paraded before the witness. One of the men picked out the witness, turned out not to be a corporal, but he had stripes on his arm. Detective Inspector Reed made a statement of the efforts made by the police to discover the perpetrator of the murder. Several persons ha had stated that they saw the deceased woman on the previous Sunday with corporal with a corporal, but when all the corporals and privates at the Tower and Wellington barracks were paraded before them, they failed to identify the man. The military authorities afforded every facility to the police. Pearly Paul picked out two men belonging to the Coldstream Guards at the Wellington barracks. One of those men had three good conduct stripes, and he was proved beyond doubt to have been with his wife from eight Monday night to six the following morning, and the other man also proved to have been in the barracks at five minutes past ten on bank holiday night. The police would be pleased if anyone would give them information of having seen anyone with God damn the deceased on the night of the bank holiday. I'm sorry, this is so hard for me to read. Uh, the coroner, in summing 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 up, said that the crime was one of the most brutal. That had occurred in some years for a poor defenseless woman to be outraged and stabbed in the manner which this woman had been was almost beyond belief they could only come to one conclusion and that was that the deceased was brutally and cruelly murdered the jury returned the verdict of willful murder against some persons and persons unknown the information excludes the murder of the first woman miss smith jack the ripper can't be the author of that crime on the other hand there are enough similarities to suggest he may be the killer of martha to bram i must go to the pet shop If the first letter didn't matter, then why did I have to read it? I must go to the pet shop. <laughs> okay, well, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. Let's go. Let's go. Before we do that, let's go ahead and save. Because I need to save and make sure that that voice is saved. <laughs> that awful reading voice with that awful large amount of text that is very hard for me to even comprehend is saved into the world. You guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.